During its six years at sea, the research vessel Roger Ravel spanned the globe from South Africa to Australia, the Indian Ocean, and the Eastern Seaboard. Here with details of their epic voyage are Bruce Applegate, Associate Director of Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and Rosa Leon Zayas, Chief Scientist of the Tonga Trench Expedition aboard the Ravel. Thank you both for joining me. This You're is welcome. exciting. You're back in town. Yes. Yes. Bruce, you're in charge of ship operations. 86 research expeditions were carried out during this uh, during this time on the, Revel, on the Revel. What kind of experiments did you do? Almost every kind you can think of putting on a ship. I mean, one of the, the, the great things about Scripps research vessels is that we really do everything. We're general purpose research vessels. So that means uh, things like looking at the biology of the oceans, the physics of the water, uh, what's going on under the under the ocean floor, looking at the geology and geophysics of the ocean floor, and looking at the, the dynamics of the, the ocean-air interface, and even looking up in the atmosphere for climate studies. We just saw a picture of the vessel right outside of a giant iceberg. I mean, are you taking samples from icebergs, from the seafloor, from the ocean? Where, where are you getting this uh, the samples from? Well, wherever we can take them. It depends on what the objectives of the scientific party uh, are. And... Uh, the, the, the picture you're talking about was a, a really neat cruise that we did down right to the ice edge in Antarctica where we were looking at the physical properties of the water down there and it's something that we do on a repeat basis and it's one of the kinds of programs that we do to try to figure out what's changing about our planet. And how do you find out if it's changing? Well, you, you keep going and looking. You keep exploring. Yeah. Rosa, how long was the uh, Tonga Trench expedition and what was your mission? It was about seven days long, I'm pretty short. And the mission was the, to analyze and understand the microbial um, composition and uh, microbial properties of the deep, deep ocean, about nine kilometers down the water column. Nine kilometers. How long would it take to a analyze that kind of data? A long time. We got our samples and brought them back to San Diego right away and started analyzing the samples and the data, but this will take years to complete What analysis. do you hope to, to gather, at least from your mission? From my perspective, I would like to understand uh, what kinds of microbes are down there and what are they doing in their environment. All right, and Bruce, why is this uh, vessel in such high demand? She got to be on it for a week, but others are clamoring to get on board. Yeah, we stay really busy on our ships. This, this ship, the Ravel, we like to have it busy 300 days a year, which is a really aggressive tempo. And the reason it's so busy and the reason so many people want to use it is, is really it's because it's a highly capable ship. It's, it's one of the biggest ships in the academic research fleet. And it's uh, really sort of bristling with instrumentation, so uh, stuff that's built into the ship that allow you to sense the water and the, and the seabed. But also it's designed so that scientists like Rosa, when they come to sea, they can quickly uh, turn the ship into whatever kind of floating laboratory they want, whether they're physicists or biologists. It's a big deal. They, they'll come and they'll install all their instruments. And uh, we try to make the ship a, a giant plug-and-play instrument. And... Uh, it takes a lot of forethought it's like and planning. like play laboratory. Exactly. Tell us about the, um, I understand there's a, a, a robotic arm, a first of its kind robotic arm getting put on uh, the ship. What is that? Well, one of the things we're doing while we have the opportunity here in San Diego, it's been six years since we've been here, is to do a lot of the, the, the kinds of maintenance and upgrades that uh, really are best done here in, on the West Coast and especially in San Diego. And this particular arm is really an articulating crane. Um, and, you know, one of the, the, the the things that we do a lot with our research vessels is deploy big, heavy instruments over the side and then down to the ocean bottom. And uh, what we're trying to do is, is use an articulating arm that, that will able, be able to pick things up and very carefully place them into the water. So what that allows us to do then is to, to work in more extreme sea states with, with heavier pieces of gear. So really extend our ability to work in heavy seas by using a, a really high-tech piece of equipment. All righty. Um, just very briefly, next step is Vietnam waters? It is. All it, right. Are you going to go back? Sadly, not this time, but hopefully one of the days. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait to hear what happens. Thanks. Thank you both so much for talking You're with welcome. us. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you.